Chapter 611, Top Notch Treasures The Golden Kitten stopped in front of a piece of fist-sized raw jade ore and glanced at Xiaokao. When it saw that she bent over to pick up the material, it continued to walk forward. It didn't take Xiaokao much effort before she picked four to five pieces. There were some large ones, small ones, exquisite looking ones, and even some crude looking ones. The raw jade ores selected by Yu Xiaokao were all in Zijun Yang's hands. He was reluctant to make his little ass do all the work, so whenever she picked up one from the ground, he would take it from her and carry it. Both of his hands were now full of ores. Luckily, none of the rocks selected by the little divine stone were overly large, so he could still handle the ones he was currently holding. In the end, the golden kitten stopped in front of an ore that was covered in tiny little dots, similar to the tiny paws on a human's face. The kitten's golden dark eyes flashed with joy when it sensed the rich aura inside the rock. The aura the rock was exuding was some comfortable and warm that all it wanted to do was lay on top of the ore. Shopkeeper Jang saw that Miss Yu's gaze had landed on top of the raw jade ore that was as large as a millstone and hurriedly gone over to explain don't judge it by its appearance. Although the surface of this rock is bumpy and full of holes, this type of ore falls under the sandy, rough, and bumpy category of jade. The rough exterior of this raw jade ore is classified as one of the finer jades, and it has a relatively high chance to develop into a quality jade. If you like this one, then I'll have someone get it out for you. This piece is rather large, so moving it out will be too troublesome. Why don't we break into it right here? Yuxiakao marked a few lines on the stone under the little divine stone's guidance and then nodded her head at an experienced master to break it out. After thirty minutes had passed, the stone cracked open and a piece of smooth, exquisite, and mutton-fat white jade was exposed. This piece of mutton-fat jade was white and flawless in appearance, it was as moist as milk. It was even slightly warm to the touch. The experienced master who was brought over to extract the jade held a mutton-fat jade that was bigger than the size of a regular basketball. His eyes shone as he exclaimed in admiration, I have worked in this field for decades and I have never seen such high quality mutton-fat jade before. It was well known that jades were expensive and can support people financially, this was especially true for quality jades which can fetch a higher price than regular jades. Quality jade was hard to come by, but there was no doubt that the jade in the experienced extraction master's hand was a top-notch jade. Based on its color, texture, and appearance, it was impeccably perfect. Even a small jade pendant or jade tassel made from this variety of mutton fat jade would cost a fortune. This jade exceeded the quality needed to make a jade bracelet. It was not an exaggeration to say that this jade was priceless. If any of the family had a jade bracelet made from this jade piece, then it could even be regarded as a family heirloom and pass it down through the generations. It would be more than enough to carve ten jade bracelets from this large mutton fat jade and still have some remaining jade left over. The remaining material from this piece of jade could be sculpted into small flower decorations. This piece of jade was worth enough to produce the amount wisdom jade pavilion could earn in three years. If they carved this large piece of jade into a larger object instead of bracelets, then it would definitely become one of the great treasures of the capital. There were only a few people who could afford such a jade sculpture in this world. The final product of the jade was based on the material, craftsmanship, and meaning behind the jade. The price could increase by ten times when the material was made from the finest jade material and it could increase by ten times again if the craftsmanship was done by a first class craftsman. The quality of this jade was definitely the best among the best. There were many excellent jade craftsmen masters in Wisdom Jade Pavilion. There were only a few craftsmen in the entire Great Ming Dynasty who had surpassed the mastery of the craftsmen in Wisdom Jade Pavilion. Those craftsmen rarely took the initiative to openly carve for others. As for the meaning behind the jade, as long as Master Wu from the Wisdom Jade Pavilion sculpted the jade, then there would be no problem. Shopkeeper Jang cautiously took the mutton fat jade from the extraction master. He narrowed his eyes in admiration at the extremely rare treasure in his hands. He had worked in the jade industry for over 30 years, and this was the first time he had seen such a perfect and beautiful piece of raw jade. He loved jade, 
so it was impossible for him to contain his excitement while holding this piece jade in his hands. A voice suddenly broke him away from his trance, Master, did you extract the jades from the other rocks? Shopkeeper Jang suddenly snapped out from his trance. His master had already promised to give this piece of rare jade to Miss Yu. Based on how much his master doted on Miss Yu, he would never ask her to pay a huge sum for the jade. Instead, he might even give the jade to her for free as a sign of his affection. This was a rare treasure from the Wisdom Jade Pavilion. Yet it was already destined to be given away. If the jade could be stored in the Wisdom Jade Pavilion, then he would be able to admire the jade every day. However dot his dreams were bound to fail. Zhejun Yang glared at shopkeeper Jiang in contempt for how lacking he was currently acting. He didn't even feel distressed as the owner of the Wisdom Jade Pavilion. Yet shopkeeper Jang acted like someone had carved his heart out from his chest. It seems like I'm quite lucky today and managed to have a good start. Let's strike the iron while it's hot and extract all the jades from these rocks. Yuxia Kao leaned over and looked at the mutton fat jade. She didn't know much about jade, but she could tell that the jade looked flawless and it was warm and smooth to the touch. Zijun Yang stared at her profoundly and thought. Continue pretending. Do you think I'm blind? You chose whichever or that the golden kitten stopped in front of. The longer the golden kitten stood in front of it, the higher the quality the jade will turn out to be. The golden kitten stood in front of this piece of jade the longest, and it turned out to be a top-notch treasure. As a result, all the pieces of ores she picked out must all be quality jade. Just as he expected, there were two more pieces of mutton fat jade from the remaining pile of jade. Although the quality and value could not compare to the first mutton fat jade they found, they were still of rare quality. However, the two mutton fat jades were not as large as the first one. One piece of jade was enough to be carved into a pair of jade pendants and small decorations while the other one could be carved into a pair of mutton fat jade bracelets. The remaining jade were all white jade which were also very valuable. Shopkeeper Jang's heart bled as he watched. If these jade were sold in the Wisdom Jade Pavilion, then this year's profit would definitely soar and his bonus as the shopkeeper would also be extremely generous. But now dot it will all be gone. But shopkeeper Jang was somewhat doubtful. How could this young girl's luck be so good? She was able to extract good quality jade from every raw ore she picked up. Could she be a master in discerning jade? No. That was impossible because the jade experts that Wisdom Jade Pavilion hired all had decades of experience. Yet, none of them were able to extract a jade from every piece of rock they chose, let alone a high quality jade each time. Even if she was a young girl who learned how to identify jades from the moment she was born, it was still impossible for her to be more experienced than those jade experts. It seemed like Dot he could only reluctantly attribute all of this to sheer luck. Little lass. Do you still want to choose more jade? Zhejun Yang asked the little lass softly when he saw that his little lass was fiddling with the mutton fat jade that was large enough to sculpt two pieces of jade pendants from it. When he saw that his little lass shook her head in response, he turned to shopkeeper Jiang and said, Bring these jade rocks to Miss Yu's private room. Shopkeeper Jiang hesitated for a moment and asked, do, dot, do I bring all the jade to her private room? Yuxia Kao pursed her mouth and jokingly asked, What's the matter? Are you afraid that I don't have enough money to pay for them? Don't worry, even though I didn't bring enough money today, I will have someone send the full amount tomorrow. Or, is it because shopkeeper Jiang is unwilling to part with the top-notch mutton fat jade? Zijun Yang's expression immediately darkened. What was wrong with this manager? The shopkeeper was usually very capable and clear-minded, so what happened to him today? Why was he acting so muddle-headed? Didn't he see that his master was the one who invited this guest over? Didn't he realize that he was causing him to lose his face in front of his little lass? He was even willing to give her the entire shop as well as all the workers of the shop over to his little lass. He wouldn't even feel the least bit unwilling or distressed. So what if she didn't bring enough money? This prince didn't lack money. Besides, she was going to become his wife in the future. So how dare a mere shopkeeper babble so much when the future female head of the house came over to choose a few oars? It seemed like shopkeeper Jang was getting bored of working in the Wisdom Jade Pavilion as a manager. They lacked a shopkeeper in the Western Border Jade Exchange, 
so maybe he should send shopkeeper Jang there to work for a few years. His master's gaze was as sharp as a knife. Shopkeeper Jang immediately sobered up after he received a glare from Zhejun Yang. What was he doing? Since his master took the initiative to invite a guest over, that meant his master valued the guest a lot. The whole shop was owned by his master and since his master didn't feel heartbroken by this, then why would a mere shopkeeper like him interfere in his master's personal matters? He had to quickly find a way to make amends quickly because if he had accidentally angered his master, then it would be the end of his career as the Wisdom Jade Pavilion's shopkeeper. His master might even send him to the west border out of anger. If that happened, then he wouldn't even have enough tears to cry. Although shopkeeper Jang had only worked in the Wisdom Jade shop for three years, the business of the shop soared to new heights each year. His master also changed the shop's business model, causing the annual profits to greatly exceed their expected amount. All the employees would receive big bonuses because of the increased profit. Even the young clerk working at the shop received 200 tls as a bonus, much higher than usual. Since a small-time clerk had received such a large bonus, it was unimaginable how much the manager received. It was almost the end of the year now and the shop accountant had begun to calculate this year's profits. He knew that this year, the shop had made more profits compared to the previous years, so the bonus the employees would receive would definitely exceed that of last year. Last year, he received 2,000 tls of silver as a year-end bonus. At the end of the year, when he reported Wisdom Jade Pavilion's accounts along with the other managers to his master, none of the other properties could compare to how much Wisdom Jade Pavilion earned except for Treasure Pavilion and the plantation. The other shopkeepers could only stare at them enviously because it was impossible for them to earn the same amount of profits as they did. Being the manager of Wisdom Jade Pavilion was a lucrative job and many people were eyeing his job. He couldn't lose his cushy job over something minor. When he noticed that his master was unhappy, shopkeeper Jang hurriedly tried to make up for his mistake, miss you, you must be joking with me, you are the one and only distinguished guest that master has ever personally invited over, let's not discuss money because that would be too formal, this servant was just asking whether I should bring it all the jade to your private room first or have the master craftsman look at that jade first, then, you would be immediately able to discuss the style you want them to carve it into. As for this piece of top-notch mutton fat jade, would you like it to be carved into a bracelet, or would you want to carve some ornaments or decorations from it? The experienced craftsman from our shop can give you some good suggestions. Oh dot is that so? I thought shopkeeper Jang was reluctant to sell this jade. Yuxia Kao smiled sweetly at shopkeeper Jiang who was sweating profusely. Zijun Yang had a gloomy and displeased expression on his face while Yuxia Kao secretly pulled on his hands. Miss you must be joking. The jade and the shops are all under my master's command, so how could a mere servant like me make such decisions? But I have to say, miss you. You have a great eye for discerning jades. You managed to discover such a high quality mutton fat jade that could only appear once in a century. This servant has been selling jade for no less than 20 years and this is the first time I have seen such a fine piece of jade. Shopkeeper Jang keenly noticed that Miss Yu was the key to determining his master's mood based on their earlier interactions. He noticed that the young girl merely tugged on his master's sleeve and gave him a warning look and the expression on his master's face immediately improved. His master's gaze no longer felt like a sharp knife aimed at him. Shopkeeper Jang felt like he was reborn again after this calamity passed. Chapter 612, Betrothal Gift Yuxia Kao didn't know much about Jade because, in her previous life, she was just a regular citizen struggling at the bottom of the pyramid. She struggled to feed herself and her younger siblings every day. She would occasionally visit the mall and hang around for a few moments by the jewelry stores. She would merely glance at the beautiful sparkling jewelry and jade that were way out of her price range. She looked at the smooth and radiant jade in her hand with interest. Although the jade had not yet been polished, the jade still exuded a beautiful white color. It was no wonder that the prices of these jades remained as expensive as ever. 
Even in the future, people still flocked to shops to buy unattainable and rare jade. The top-notch mutton fat jade that was larger than a regular-sized basketball was placed on the table of Xiaokao's private room. The golden kitten hurriedly jumped onto the table and climbed on top of the jade. It laid on the jade on its stomach and started cultivating. It was unwilling to delay its cultivation even for a few seconds. However, to other people, they merely thought that the young little kitten really knew how to find a place to sleep. It chose the most expensive place to sleep. Shopkeeper Jang was shaking at his core when he saw the kitten jump on top of the jade. He feared that the young kitten would damage the jade. However, he was being too worried. If the jade was that fragile, then no one would want to buy it. If Yuxiakao was still ignorant of the mutton fat jade's value based on shopkeeper Jang's reactions, then she would be stupid. She guessed that she had probably chosen all of the best jades from this batch of jade. In the next month or so, Wisdom Jade Pavilion would probably not have any quality jade to sell. Naturally, she would not take all the jades she found from him. After all, Zijun Yang owned Wisdom Jade Pavilion, so she should leave some leeway for him to survive, right? Shopkeeper. I heard that we have recently found a top-notch mutton fat jade. Can this old man have a look? An old but enthusiastic voice could be heard from outside the private room. Shopkeeper Jang's eyes immediately lit up. Why would this old gentleman be suddenly willing to take the initiative to come here? He hurriedly walked outside and greeted the esteemed old man with an enthusiastic smile. Old Lin, we're honored with your presence. Your presence brings light to our humble shop. Humble shop. If Wisdom Jade Pavilion is a small humble shop, then the other jade shops in the capital are even less worth mentioning. Hurry up and show me the top notch mutton fat jade, so this old man can take a look. Old Lin had a petite build, grizzled hair, and a ruddy complexion. He was a hearty and small old fellow. It turned out that the top-notch mutton fat jade had lured Old Lin out. Old Lin was the best jade craftsman in the capital. He had retired many years ago and unless there was something that caught his interest, he wouldn't step a foot outside his house. Old Lin had been in the Wisdom Jade Pavilion before and told the employees to inform him if any quality raw material was found. The obedient and good-natured clerk had probably run over to inform Old Lu about the new jade. Old Lin, I'm sorry, but that piece of raw jade has already been bought by someone. Shopkeeper Jang apologized to the old man. Old Lin glared at him, blew his beard, and said, Could it be that you guys already decided on a jade craftsman since the jade has already been bought? If this piece of jade meets my expectation after I have a look, then I am willing to make an expectation and carve this jade. The manager was extremely surprised. Old Lin was one of the leading figures in the jade carving world. Even the jade carved from ordinary jade would fetch a high price after going through his hands. Numerous people begged Old Lin to help them carve a piece of jade, but he declined them all. It was unthinkable that this old man would come here after hearing the news and even promised to sculpt the jade if it caught his interest before even seeing the actual jade. It's a once in a lifetime blessing to have you carve for them. I don't think that anyone would refuse this offer, right? The shop manager politely asked Old Lin to wait. Then, he entered the private room and informed his master as well as Lady Fang and her daughter of the news. Yuxia Kao did not know of Old Lin, but Lady Fang had heard of the old gentleman's name before. As soon as the shopkeeper mentioned the old gentleman's name, Lady Fang didn't even ask her daughter's opinion before immediately agreeing. She would be foolish if she didn't immediately accept the offer. A piece of raw jade that was worth 200 dollars of silver could have its value increase by tenfolds or even more after being carved by Old Lin. Only an idiot wouldn't take up on this chance. As soon as Old Lin entered the private room, his eyes immediately landed on the raw jade on top of the table. Just at this moment, the golden kitten had just finished cultivating and lazily jumped off the jade. Old Lin's heart pounded rapidly and he shouted, How can you let a kitten trample on such a precious piece of jade? If the jade is even slightly damaged, then even skinning the kitten wouldn't even be enough to make up for it. The little divine stone was comfortably stretching itself when it heard the old man's words. The little divine stone's fur stood on its end in anger and immediately screamed at the old man, 
I am a divine stone that has cultivated for tens of thousands of years, I am the ancestor of all stones, so how can I be inferior to a broken piece of jade like this one? If you start peeping your mouth off again, then this divine stone will push this broken piece of rock from the table and break it. It walked up to the mutton fat jade and put one of its paws on top of the stone. Its dark golden pupils had turned into slits due to anger as it stared at the old man threateningly. Yuxiakao was amused at the little divine stone's reaction, but she was also angry for the little divine stone. A top-notch jade like this one was indeed rare but it was a dead object. She was opposed to taking the life away from a living thing for a dead object. Xiaokao reached out her hands, took the kitten, and gently stroked its fur that was standing on its end. She looked at old Lin disapprovingly, old gentleman, what you had just said is wrong. I was the one who picked up this stone and royal prince Yang has already agreed to sell this piece of jade to me. This means that I have full right over how I use this jade so it's none of your concern. Little glutinous dumpling has been raised by me for five to six years already, so how could my affections for a living being exceed that of a stone? If the jade was destroyed, then at most, the value of the jade would decrease. However, even the humblest life has the right to live and to be respected by others. What do you think? Shopkeeper Jang was afraid that Missy would cause old Lin to leave in anger, so he wanted to interfere. However, when he received a sharp glare from his master, he immediately changed his mind. Got it. Since the jade belonged to Miss Yu, then she had full right to do with it as she liked. Why should he interfere? Old Lin was not a stubborn old antique who was bound to his old-fashioned ways. When he saw that the jade was not damaged in any way, he breathed a sigh of relief and said with a smile, I cherish this jade a lot, so I accidentally made an inappropriate analogy so I blurted out something crude. If young lady is still upset by what I said, then this old man will gladly take back what I just said. However, this old man has to remind you that this jade is among the best mutton fat jade I've ever seen. Have the two of you discussed the price yet? Oh, that's right. Yuxia Kao turned to look at Zijun Yang who had a poker face on. She blinked her eyes playfully and asked, Royal Prince Yang, how much do you plan to charge me for this piece of jade? Dot Zijun Yang silently stared at her charming and adorable appearance. He fell silent for a moment before he raised his index finger and then shook his head lightly. One million tiles of silver? Old Lim cried out in alarm and promptly started to talk. Royal Prince, please think twice about this. This piece of jade is extremely valuable. I believe one million tiles of silver is too low. I won't charge even one tl of silver. Zijun Yang had an unhappy expression on his face. Didn't he tell her that what he owned was going to be hers in the future, and what she owned would always be hers? Didn't speaking about the price of the jade make the relationship between the two of them too awkward and unfamiliar? Ah. The words that old Lin wanted to say next were stuck in his throat. He turned to look at the young lady carefully and realization suddenly hit him when he recalled the rumors he heard. It would be a pity if this piece of jade is made into jewelry. However, if it's carved into an auspicious ornament such as lovely flower, round moon, amidst the flowers under the moonlight, and hundreds of children and thousands of grandchildren, etc., as a betrothal gift. Then it would be the first of its kind in the entire Great Ming Dynasty. Betrothal gift. Zijun Yang's heart skipped a beat. After the New Year's ended, he was definitely going to head over to the Yu family to propose. The little lass residing in his heart deserved the best of the best. He would make old Lin carve this piece of top-notch mutton jade and send it as the defining piece of his betrothal gift. His gift would definitely cause a big sensation in the capital. He had set his mind. This mutton fat jade will belong to his little lass no matter what. But this gift will just be sent to her later than he had originally planned. Zijun Yang no longer pretended to be cold and domineering. He looked at old Lin earnestly and asked, based on your experience, what do you think the theme of this jade should be? Old Lin's eyes were still focused on the jade and he answered without hesitation, based on the shape of this piece of jade. I believe it would be best if we carved it into amidst the flowers under the moonlight. In addition to that, amidst the flowers under the moonlight is more appropriate and suitable for your highness's needs. When you grow old, 
You can always reminisce about your youth when you look at the jade carving, wouldn't that be great? Okay, let's do as old Lin said. Old Lin, will you be able to finish the final product within two months? Zijun Yang already came to his decision, but if he planned on using it as a betrothal gift, then it needed to be completed on time. Why, is the royal prince planning to propose in two months? Old Lin looked down and pondered for a moment. Then, he nodded his head vigorously and said, This old man will release the vigor from my youth and finish the jade carving for you in two months. I will make sure I won't delay your matter. Yuxia Kao rolled her eyes, he had just told her that the jade belonged to her and that she could do whatever she wanted with it. After a span of a few minutes, he selected the jade craftsman for the jade, the theme of the jade, and even the deadline for the completion. He decided everything on his own initiative. Didn't he tell her that he was going to listen to her? Ahem ahem. Xiaoa Kao cleared her throat, reminding him of her existence. Zijun Yang suddenly turned to look at her and smiled apologetically and said, Little lass, I'm sorry but you can't take this piece of jade by for the time being. Rest assured because this piece of jade belongs to you. However, it will be delayed by two months. Oh right, little lass. What do you think about the theme of the jade carving being amidst the flowers under the moonlight? You have already decided on everything, so what's the point of asking me? Could she slap him on his face in public and make him lose face? Yuxia Kao pursed her lips and said with no interest, It's fine as long as you believe it's fine. Is my opinion even important? Your opinion is important. Of course, your opinion is important. If you don't like the theme, then we can replace the theme with something else. What do you think of the theme, hundreds of children and thousands of grandchildren? He asked in a fawning manner. Zijun Yang saw that she was unhappy, so he hurriedly became a filial and devoted dog. Scram. Why would you give a jade carving with the theme hundreds of children and thousands of grandchildren to an unmarried girl? Royal Prince Yang. Did you have a brain spasm, or are you deliberately trying to get scolded? Yuxia Kao took in a deep breath and suppressed the curse that she was about to spit out. She rolled her eyes at him and said, let's go with the amidst the flowers under the moonlight theme. As long as it's something that won't arouse suspicion, then it'll be fine. Old Lin watched the young couple with interest as they blatantly flirted in front of him while he held the twelve catty jade. He didn't feel the weight of the jade in his arms at all. He wouldn't mind holding another ten pieces of jade with similar qualities. However, the young girl from the family was as the rumors had described, she was a fascinating person. The interactions between her and Royal Prince Yang were very natural. The communication between the two seemed to have stemmed from their spirits and was not restricted by the morals of the secular world. It was particularly pure and innocent. Chapter 613 Future Lady of the House Since Yuxia Kao was unable to stop Zijun Yang's ridiculous behavior, she decided to ignore him and said to shopkeeper Jiang, how much would it cost to buy all the remaining jades? Ah! Shopkeeper Jiang secretly looked towards his master. His master had already given away a top grade mutton fat jade worth over a thousand tls, so would he still care about this little money? Although these added up to over six figures. Just thinking about it made his heart ache. Why are you looking at this prince? Just accept what you're supposed to take. Although he said this, Zijun Yang avoided the lass's line of sight and secretly made an implicit expression at shopkeeper Jiang. They definitely had to collect some money, otherwise, the lass would get angry and leave without taking any of the jades. As for his betrothal gifts, it would probably be difficult to even send them out after the new year. Shopkeeper Jiang received his master's signal and said with a polite smile, Miss you, for the two mutton fat jades in your hands. The smaller one cost 10,000 tls and the bigger one is 15,000 tls. I'll just take 5,000 tls for the remaining white jades and green jades. Thus, it's a total of 30,000 tls. You're bought over by the master himself, so I'll offer you the best discount available at the store. You just need to pay a total of 15,000 tls. Yuxia Kao didn't continue to argue. After all, if Zijun Yang went to shop at her stores, she would also give him the best discount. After she swiftly paid the money, she felt an aching pain as she looked at the several pieces of unimpressive looking jades. People often say that gold is valuable and jade is priceless, but this is too expensive ah. 
you'd see a cow side in her heart, if she didn't have their money making business blossoming beauty, there was no way that she would spend over 10,000 tls for several worthless rocks, miss you, rest assured, this old servant will definitely pick the best craftsman to process these jades for you, do you have any special requests? Shopkeeper Jang spoke in a very humble and polite manner, his master had that he would send the betrothal gifts after the new year, so it was certain that status of the future lady of the house belonged to this young maiden. When shopkeeper Jang first saw Yu Xiaokao, he was confused by her casual and indifferent attitude. He had originally thought that when a peasant girl entered the grand and imposing wisdom jade pavilion, she would feel uneasy and slightly nervous. However, this young maiden wasn't like that at all. Furthermore, the bearing of Lady Fang and the two maid servants behind her gave him the wrong impression that his master had changed the target of his pursuit. Author's Note if Zhejun Yang knew what he was thinking about, he would definitely want to crack open his head to see what was inside. But, afterwards, his misconception was broken by the name Miss Yu. Was there anyone who didn't know that the Yu family were a nouveau riche family in the capital? They came from a low origin and had a low ranked official's position and an awkward status, but no one in the capital dared to publicly offend the Yu family. One should know that in the winter, they had control of the meals on the dining tables of the noble families in the capital. Even if one didn't care about the food, there was no guarantee that one's wife and daughter didn't love beauty. Ah, loving beauty was a woman's nature. Due to the excellent quality of the products and services of blossoming beauty, many ladies with troubled skin had obtained satisfactory results after using their products. These results were spread by word of mouth, and now, most of the noble madams and young misses in the capital had a blossoming beauty membership card. Even if they couldn't apply for a card due to lack of financial resources, they would use their long time savings to buy a set of skin care products suitable for their skin. During the winter, the climate in the capital was cold and dry. If they tried to use other products after using blossoming beauty's products, their skin would feel dry and uncomfortable as if they were wearing a mask. Recently, Blossoming Beauty had launched skin care products for children, which were naturally non-irritating and could protect the child's skin. This was good news for the children in the capital. One must know the strong influence of bedside whispers. Even if there were officials who were dissatisfied with Yu Xiaokao being an official, they wouldn't be able to take up the idea of going against the Yu family due to the gentle advice from their fierce wives and precious daughters. It was just that shopkeeper Jang hadn't expected that Miss Yu had such poise and composure. She didn't seem rustic at all and might be even more graceful than some of the noble young misses in the capital. What he admired the most was that such a small person was able to tame his master, who was such a big monster. She could get royal prince Yang, who was known for his ruthlessness and cruelty, to be so obedient and vowed to marry no one else but her. How skilled was that? It seemed like, in the future, he must do his best to please his mistress in order to secure his status. Shopkeeper Jang had actually thought about so much in this short period of time. Xiaokao, on the other hand, was still discussing with Lady Fang about what the jades should be carved into and how to carve them. This smaller piece of mutton fat jade can be carved into a pair of dragon and phoenix pendants. It's quite fitting to gift a pair of dragon and phoenix pendants for third young master Zhu's upcoming marriage. Lady Fang thought about the hairpin that third young masters gave last time and felt that a 10,000 jade pendant should be considered presentable. Yuxia Kao nodded her head and decided to also give the bride a pink pearl bracelet. In this way, the wedding present wouldn't seem stingy. This piece can be made into a pair of bangles. Ka, I noticed that you don't have much jewelry, so let's make it according to the size of your wrist. It was difficult for women to resist jewelries and Lady Fang was no exception. However, it was hard to find exquisite jades. As a mother, how could she try to take a fine piece of jade from her daughter? She didn't have much jewelry? How was that possible? One should know that the man in front of her, in order to gain her reassurance, did everything he could to send her gifts from time to time, and most of them were jewelries worn by young maidens. As long as there was something that he liked at Treasure Pavilion, it would be sent over to her. There were things like diamond earrings, diamond necklaces, diamond bracelets, and jewelry made of ruby, sapphire, 
and emerald. There were also a lot of jades and corals. There was barely any space left in her little treasure box. After Xiaokai expressed that she had enough jewelry, Lady Fang looked at her and said, even if you're not going to wear them, it's good to save it as your dowry in the future. Royal Prince Yang had sent such valuable betrothal gifts over, so their family naturally had to enrich her dowry. It was difficult to come across high quality jade, but it shouldn't be too late to start saving up now. Yuxiaka rolled her eyes in her head, do I need these to make my dowry look more ample? Blossoming beauty, pastry shops, pharmaceutical workshops, and the wine distillery. Which of these aren't golden hens that produced money? Isn't just any one of these more valuable than the top grade mutton fat jade that can't be eaten or drunken? Godmother. Why don't we both get one each? Mother daughter bangles. I reckon that the quality of this piece of jade is quite good. You can pass on your bangle to my younger sister in law as a family heirloom that can be passed down generation to generation. It can be considered a memento of the ancestor for the descendants. What do you think? Yuxia Kao urged Lady Fang as she looked at Fang Haolin, who was eating pastries and playing with the new toy that Zhejun Yang gave him. Upon hearing himself being mentioned, Fang Haolin nodded his little head hard and said, Okay, one for older sister and one for little Lin Lin. It's for your wife, not you. Yuxia Kao helped him wipe the crumbs on his face and laughed as she tapped his little head. With a matter of course expression, Fang Haolin said, What belongs to my wife also belongs to me. Wrong. Zhejun Yang came out to show his presence again, It should be everything that belongs to you also belongs to your wife. What are men earning money and working so hard for? Isn't it for their wife and children? Little Lin Lin, you must quickly change your thinking, lest you can't find a wife in the future. At that time, you won't have any tears left to cry. When shopkeeper Jang heard this, he felt even more firm about his decision to carry favor with his future mistress. Even his master had said that everything he owned belonged to his wife, which meant that Wisdom Jade Pavilion and himself, a servant, were no exception. It seemed like his master would be changed soon. Fang Haolin, the little fellow, felt troubled for a moment, and then reluctantly said, All right. Everything that belongs to Lin Lin belongs to my wife, and everything owned by my wife is also Lin Lin's, okay? No. What belongs to you also belongs to your wife, and everything your wife owns belongs to herself only. Zhejun Yang firmly abided by Xia Kao's words. He indeed had the potential of being a completely devoted husband. Fang Haolin's little face scrunched up even more as he looked at the delicious pastry in his hands. When he thought about how there would be a young girl fighting for food with him in the future, his mood immediately turned bad. With an expression as if he was about to cry, he looked at his mother and older sister, and pitifully said, Getting married isn't fun. Lin Lin don't want a wife anymore. Everyone in the room was immediately amused by his words. In the end, Xia Kao made the final decision to make two bangles, one for her godmother and one for herself. The rest were made into jewelries or jade pendants to be given as New Year gifts to every member of the family. Even little Lin Lin was given a jade amulet. After that, the mother and daughter strolled around the shop again. Xia Kao noticed that there wasn't a single jadeite accessory in the store. When exactly was jadeite introduced into China? In her previous life, Xia Kao hadn't graduated from middle school and didn't know much about jades. Thus, she naturally didn't know about this. However, it seemed like jadeite wasn't very popular at the beginning of the Ming Dynasty. Her eyes suddenly lit up at this thought. The business opportunity was self-evident. Perhaps. She and Zhejun Yang could be the first to endeavor in this business. With this thought, she pulled Zhejun Yang aside and whispered, Ruizi, I thought of a way to make money that will need your help. Are you willing to help me? Of course. Only a dumbass would refuse to earn money. Zhejun Yang had heard this phrase from Xia Kao by chance. Don't you have a team specialized in foreign trade? In the southwest of our great Ming Empire, there's a small, undeveloped country. There's a lot of mountain forests in the country, but they produced a kind of jade called jadeite. There are various colors such as green, purple, red, blue, yellow, and black. Good quality jadeites are as transparent as glass, and glossy like mutton fat jade. It's similar to nephrite and also good for people's health. Yuxia Kao stopped for a moment and looked at Zhejun Yang with a gaze full of expectation. 
Zhejiang Yang was inwardly curious about how she, who rarely left home, knew about everything around the world. Was it that cultivated stone who told her? Perhaps that place was the hometown of the multicolored stone, the little divine stone, who was in its master's embrace, rolled its eyes, dude, you're thinking too much. You mean dot you want this prince to gather a group of merchants to do jadeite business with a small, unknown country? Zijun Yang asked as he looked at the young girl's face, which brightened up as soon as she talked about making money. Chapter 614, Promising Prospect MHM Not only can we do a jadeite trade, but we can also set up a stone betting shop near the stained glass factory. The jade rocks transported from there can be put on site for people to buy with a marked price. Like gambling, if the value of the jadeite is higher than that of the original jade rock, then you win the bet. If not, then you lose. One shall know that it's hard for even immortals to break jade. The jade stone is mined in the mountains and wrapped within a thick layer of stone. Is the jade inside? How much? How's the quality? It's all based on luck or experience. In her previous life, Xia Kao had seen a movie about stone betting. She knew a little about stone betting, and thus sounded quite believable. In actuality, she didn't know the slightest about stone betting. But she had the little divine stone as her cheat R. Ah, if this was her previous life, she might have gotten rich overnight with a trip to Tenchong. It's a pity that you were so stupid at that time. You had this divine stone beside you for so long, yet you didn't initiate the process of recognizing the master. What an idiot. The little divine stone roasted her. Who knew that there would actually be a little sprite hidden within an unassuming, little multicolored stone? I used to be an atheist, so I never expected that there would be so many immortals and demons in the world. Yuxia Kao roared back in her mind. At that time, she had picked up the little divine stone by chance and tied it onto her wrist with a red string. Who would have thought that such a cute, little thing could be summoned with one's own blood? You're the one who's cute, your whole family is cute. Komu it was the dignified divine stone who could be ranked among the deities if it cultivated up another level. But it was actually called cute by a young human girl and she even called it a little thing. There was no way that it was going to tolerate it. Yuxia Kao replied in a matter of course manner, of course I'm cute, everyone loves me. It's pitiful that no one loves you. You got abandoned by your master and punished by your master's friend to cultivate in the human realm. If you hadn't encountered me, who knows how many more years it would take for you to see the light of day again. This divine stone exhausted all my spiritual power in order to save your soul lest you have to suffer the cycle of reincarnation. Is this how you should treat your life savior? The little divine stone was angered because of her teasing. Okay, okay, okay. You have worked hard and achieved great merit. You're the best. You're the most amazing, okay? Yuxia Kao comforted the angry golden kitten perfunctorily. Seeing its cute and proud appearance, she couldn't help but kiss its little ear. She saw the color of the golden kitten's face gradually darken, and it was close to a light pink color. It turned out that the proud divine stone would also be shy. Yuxia Kao felt that it was very interesting. When she moved closer to kiss its small head, she suddenly noticed that her hands were empty. Someone had snatched the little kitten away. She looked up and found Zijun Yang glaring at her with a displeased expression. To be exact. He was staring at her red lips. Perhaps it was the effect of the mystic stone water on her body that caused her lips to appear pink like a spring peach blossom. It looked glossy and moist as if she had put on a layer of pink lip gloss. Her mouth was very small yet plump. After looking at them for a long time, one would have the urge to kiss her. At this time, it felt like this was a Jun Yang. However, his future mother-in-law and younger brother-in-law weren't too far away. He had this thought in mind but he didn't have the guts to act upon it. He could only glare fiercely at the little lass and silently threatened, I'll deal with you in the future. Such a huge vinegar jar, he's even jealous of a kitten. Yuxia Kao felt very speechless, the little divine stone felt very embarrassed, this divine stone was harassed by a weak human girl. Will those shameless immortals laugh at me when I return to the celestial realm? No way, 
I must cover up this matter and never let others know. Yu Xiaokao glanced at Zijun Yang and asked, I'm telling you something serious. What nonsense are you thinking about? Stone betting and jadeite are definitely profitable businesses. But it's an inhospitable environment there. So I reckon that it won't be peaceful on the road. Leave it to this prince. I guarantee that you will get a satisfied answer in a few days. Although Zijun Yang didn't know much about jadeites. The lass was very excited when she mentioned it. Therefore, it must be a profitable business. As for stone betting, he was more optimistic about this. In the capital, there were a bunch of profligate sons of wealthy families who had money on hand and no place to spend them. They would be very interested in gambling. An example would be the entertainment club in the suburbs. Horse racing was the most popular and profitable activity. He pondered about it in his heart. If the stone betting business was managed well, it would earn money faster than horse racing. After all, who could resist the temptation of getting rich overnight? After they left Wisdom Jade Pavilion, the group went to eat at the nearby Zenxiu restaurant. Originally, they had wanted to meet the groom and congratulate him. Unfortunately, the decoration of Zenxiu restaurant's main hall was in full swing. It was all managed by a steward, and third young master Zu was nowhere in sight. There were only a few days before his wedding, so that guy was probably very busy. Yuxiakao glanced at the main hall, which was decorated in a very festive manner. It seemed like third young master Zu didn't forget to promote his own business even on his wedding day. He was inspired by her hairpin ceremony and decided to hold his wedding at his own restaurant. Her hairpin ceremony was one of the first in the capital to be so grand and unique. Since then, Many families followed suit and held their daughter's hairpin ceremony at Zenxiu restaurant. The cost of holding a hairpin ceremony wasn't cheap, but more importantly, it saved a lot of work and gained a lot of face. It didn't matter that it was expensive because there were plenty of families in the capital who didn't lack money. In the twinkling of an eye, it was the day of third young master's wedding. The guests of the wedding naturally had to dress more festively. Yuxiakao wore a moon blue colored beaded top jacket with narrow sleeves and a pinched waist red outer gown with embroidered hems. It was embroidered with soft, elegant patterns using silver silk threads. On the bottom, she wore a lake colored silk gauze pleated skirt. There were faint multicolored flowers between the pleats and golden flowers woven on the azure stripe on the hem. She was covered with a pale mauve-colored ferret fur cloak with plum blossom patterns. She didn't have a lot of accessories on her head. The red coral hair ornament inlaid with diamonds was particularly eye-catching. The bright red color was embellished with bits of broken diamonds that looked like stars falling from the sky. When complemented with the lass's fair jade-like skin and pair of big, bright A's, she looked as delicate and dazzling as a porcelain doll. Zijun Yang, who came to pick Xiaokao up to go to the wedding together, saw that she had carefully dressed up for another person, but that person wasn't him. Moreover, it was for another man. He couldn't help but feel extremely jealous. He wished he could hide this delicate and beautiful maiden so that he would be the only one who could see her beauty. Why are you just standing there foolishly? It's getting late, so let's go. Seeing the flash of amazement in his eyes and his dazed expression, Yuxiakao's vain heart felt an unprecedented satisfaction. This ugly duckling could also turn into a swan when dressed up. However, compared with the handsome man in front of her, her appearance was only 70% as good as the other parties. But she already felt very satisfied. A. Dot this guy's looks was too lordifying. The heavens were too partial towards him. She was originally a delicate beauty, but when she stood beside him, she had directly turned into an ugly duckling. It was thanks to her careless attitude and strong heart that she didn't feel inferior and despair under his radiating aura. A. This man must have saved the entire galaxy in his previous life, and thus he was able to meet such a great woman like me in this life, PFFT. She couldn't hold back and laughed. You. Do you need to wear more clothing? I heard that it's cold today. Seeing the lass's slender waist and delicate figure under her cloak, Zijun Yang had an urge to wrap her up tightly with clothes. Was it cold dot today? Yuxiakao looked up at the bright sun in the sky. Compared to a few days ago, today was a rare day of fine weather. Then she looked at her clothes. She wore a jacket on the inside, and the cloak she had on was extra thick. She shook her head and said, I'm wearing more than enough. I'm wearing two layers of woolen trousers inside the dress. 
so I'm not cold at all. If I add on more clothes, I'll feel so heavy that I won't be able to walk properly. If you can't walk, then this prince can carry you. Zijun Yang almost said that out loud, but he knew that if he did, the lass would look at him with an angry expression and roll her eyes at him. All right, then hold this brazier, wrap it with a piece of cloth to avoid burning your hands. Also, when you go out, put on your hood and scarf. Aren't you being too over? It only takes a few steps to reach the carriage, and then I'll enter the house again after getting off the carriage. How cold would I be? Although Yuxia Cow said this, she felt very pleased inwardly that she had trained such a warm man for herself. In the ancient times, when male chauvinism was so widespread, there was such an attentive and considerate man waiting for her love. What more could she ask for? MHM. She must swiftly take in this pretty boy, so as to not be intercepted by others who noticed his good qualities. When he mentioned the matter of the marriage proposal in the upcoming year again, she would stop keeping him in suspense and go along with him. Her parents and family members should probably arrive in the next few days, right? What are you thinking about? You're not even looking up. Did you almost trip on the threshold? She felt a strong hold on her hand. The warmth of the warm and strong palm transmitted to her hand through the cotton gloves. Under his help, Yuxia Kao crossed the high threshold and reached the carriage. Yet he was still unwilling to let go of her hand and directly supported her onto the carriage. Have you dot settled on Royal Prince Yang? Lady Fang, who had entered the carriage first, looked at her daughter with a slightly complex expression. On one hand, she was very happy to see Royal Prince Yang being so considerate and good to her daughter. On the other hand, they weren't an official couple after all. If they acted so intimate in public, would it lead to people gossiping about them? Yuxia Kao nodded her head without any hesitation. She wasn't really someone from ancient times, so it wasn't her style to be reserved. Lady Fang smiled helplessly and said, in this case, tell him to quickly come to propose the marriage. This was to avoid bad rumors about her daughter if it got dragged out for too long. MHM. He plans on getting someone to calculate a good date to have his elders come over to propose the marriage after the first month. It was just a marriage proposal. They would have to wait at least until she reached the age of 18 for the actual wedding. She had already held her hairpin ceremony that represented adulthood. But in her mind, one would only be considered an adult when one reached 18. It was very dangerous for girls, who weren't fully developed, to get married and give birth too young. Okay. However, that guy, Zhejun Yang, wasn't that young anymore. He didn't seem to oppose the idea of her getting married after the age of 18. Could it be that the emperor, who was also a transmigrator, said something to him? If that guy could wait, what was her rush? She thought that it was too early to get married at 18. In her previous life, a young girl of this age was still a senior in high school R. Chapter 615, Wedding. The wedding ceremony was grand and novel, and nothing was out of the ordinary. Everything was carried out according to the ancient traditions. Before the groom, third young master Zhu, went to escort the bride to the wedding, he saw Xia Kao and her party and hastily came to greet them. After that, he would be very busy. Even after he completed all the procedures of the wedding, he still needed to come out to toast and entertain the guests. Royal Prince Yang's arrival had caught the Zhu family by surprise. They had no connection with Royal Prince Yang, and thus there was no way that they could invite him. Why did the prince deign to come here? But the Zhu family members instantly understood when they saw the young maiden beside him who he was carefully protecting. In addition to Lady Fang's status of a noble titled madam, Xia Kao had a position as an official and was personally bestowed the title of royal princess by the emperor. Thus, they were invited to sit at the main table, which was surrounded by the most respected members of the Zhu family. The group of old men were afraid that Xia Kao, a young girl, had no one to talk to, so they specially got third young master Zhu's mother, second Madam Zhu, who was originally unqualified to sit at the main table, to accompany and talk with Xia Kao. After all, when they were at Tangu Town, Xia Kao often visited the second branch of the Zhu family and the two had a decent relationship. When the groom came over to toast the table, Xia Kao watched as he, who was dressed completely in red, drank several cups of wine and his handsome face flushed with a healthy glow. There seemed to be a strong sense of happiness in his smile. She joked, 
As the saying goes, people are in high spirits when involved in happy events. Third young master indeed looks radiant today ah. The elders of the family all knew about Yuxia Kao's relationship with the Zhu family, or to be exact, third young master Zhu. It could be said that if he hadn't met Yuxia Kao, the current young head of the household might still be the third young master of the second branch who had great ambition but lacked opportunities to display them. People often said that third young master Zhu was a business genius, but without Xia Kao's recipes and methods of making vermicelli, seasonings, and century eggs. His Zenxiu restaurant would probably just be an inconspicuous restaurant in Tanga Town. It would just struggle under the exclusion of the long established full end restaurant. With his abilities, he might still be able to become successful. However, there would be a lot of hardships and obstacles in the process, making his road to success even longer. By that time, the position of the head of the Zhu family might have already fallen into the hands of his eldest uncle. There wasn't anyone who was amazingly talented among the legitimate descendants of the first branch, so, perhaps, the Zhu family would have slowly disappeared in the business industry after struggling to stay afloat for several generations. With the success of the young head of the household, the Zhu family had a resurgence that was closely related to the delicate and weak-looking royal princess Jinan in front of them. Who would have thought that an inconspicuous girl from a fisherman's family would become acquainted with the third young master of the Zhu family because of selling seafood? Furthermore, she used her ability to help Zizixu, who wasn't successful at the beginning, to succeed step by step, allowing the Zhu family to regain its glory. This young girl looked unassuming, but no one would have thought that, with her own abilities, she first gained the trust of Royal Prince Yang and boldly attempted to grow high-yielding corn kernels brought back from the Western Hemisphere. The output had shocked the Imperial Court. After that, she cultivated the high-yielding winter wheat, which caused the Emperor to make an exception to promote her to become the first female official in history. She also repeatedly made great achievements such as greenhouses for vegetables and fruits, delicious canned fruits, nourishing fruit wines, and amazingly effective medicinal pills. Each and every one of them were achievements that caused people to feel envious. However, they could only be covetous because she was no longer a mere peasant girl without any support. She now had very strong backing R. Ah, it was said that the Emperor Emeritus was fond of her craftsmanship and character, and wanted to take her as an adopted granddaughter. But she rejected the offer, not to mention that the Emperor had attached great importance to her and bestowed her the title of Royal Princess, but he also gave her a dragon-shaped jade pendant that symbolized the golden token that saved one from the death penalty. Most importantly, the cold-faced killer, Royal Prince Yang, who was feared by all of the children of noble families in the capital, had actually fallen in love with this young girl. He had pursued her for many years. Yet their status was still unknown. People in the capital had been speculating the relationship between the two for many years. At the beginning, they all said that the little peasant girl clung on to Royal Prince Yang in order to gain a firm foothold in the capital. Later, it was said that Royal Prince Yang liked the little peasant girl's capability and wanted to take her as a concubine, but the little peasant girl wasn't satisfied. Thus, Royal Prince Yang gave her the cold shoulder and refused to give her a formal status. Now, with the affirmation of the young girl's abilities, the rumors had changed again. Royal Prince Yang had long been interested in the young girl, but her family didn't easily agree because she was still too young. He was now waiting for the young maiden to reach the age of 18 to marry her. The members of the Zhu family and guests who came to celebrate the happy occasion were lucky enough to see Royal Prince Yang personally accompanying Miss Yu to congratulate the young head of the household. In their hearts, they had all tacitly approved the third speculation. Royal Prince Yang showed a very meticulous attitude towards Miss Yu when they entered the door. He personally held her cloak. He handed warm tea right into her hands. With the advantage of having long arms, he filled her bowl with the dishes that young girls liked to eat at the banquet. It seemed like this Monsieur had remarkable means. She was able to train the fierce horse, Royal Prince Yang, to be so docile and obedient. Looking at the natural and harmonious interaction between Xia Kao and Royal Prince Yang, Ladies maintained a polite smile but her heart wasn't as calm as she seemed. As his mother, there was no way that she didn't know her son's feelings. At that time, 
when Xiaokao was still the daughter of an ordinary fisherman's family and first revealed her talent in cooking, Lady Zhu had been silently observing her. She felt that, despite having an inferior background, if the young girl could help her son, it wasn't impossible for her son to marry her. However, others had noticed the young girl's beauty and talents before she had even grown up. Moreover, this person was a royal prince with a prestigious status. Even if her son was the head of the Zhu family, he still couldn't compete with a member of the imperial family. What merchants feared the most was to get into a conflict with government officials. She had originally thought that royal prince Yang only wanted to try something new. Perhaps, after two years, he would give up on this idea and listen to his elder's advice to marry a noble maiden of equal status. However, she was surprised to find out that he was a devoted lover who silently waited on the side for the young girl to blossom into her most beautiful side. Her son just had that thought in mind. On the one hand, in order to ensure a better future for the second branch, he was busy with family matters. With the expansion of Zhenxiu restaurant, he seldom returned to Tanga Town. When he had the rare chance to return, he still had to accompany her, his mother. The chance of the two interacting gradually decreased. On the other hand, her son had also shared similar thoughts as her. He felt that the girl was too young and he wasn't in a rush to express his feelings, lest he scared her. However, he had never expected that someone with a strong presence appeared beside the young girl. With his patience and efforts, he won the lass's approval and love. Miss you, this cup of wine is a toast for you. Thank you for helping me for so many years. Without you, there wouldn't be today's Zenxiu restaurant, and the current me. I shall finish my cup first to show my respect. Zuzixu drank all the wine in the cup in his hands. The young girl in front of him, who was like a small bud, had slowly blossomed into her most beautiful times. However, the one who witnessed her growth wasn't him. The wine in his mouth was clearly good wine from the ooze, yet the taste had instantly turned bitter. Let this be the last time for him to be enamored by this young maiden who could never be his. After today, he would have his own life a partner so he must treat her wholeheartedly. Although he might not be the best husband, he could give his loyalty to her. Didn't the young girl in front of him admire one partner for a lifetime? He wanted to show her that he could do it. Unfortunately, that person wasn't her. Third young master, you're speaking as if I'm an outsider. Speaking of this, had you not generously helped us, how could the Yu family develop so smoothly? In my heart, I regard you as my older brother and good friend, Yet you act like a stranger and call me miss you. A dot I'm hurt. I can't drink this cup of wine. In the weddings in her previous life, there was a custom of teasing the newlyweds. Yuxia Cow pretended to put down the fruit wine in her hands with a this baby is unhappy expression on her face. Xia Cow was still the Xia Cow in Tanga who liked to tease, laugh at, and annoy him. Perhaps. It was only his state of mind that had changed. Third young master Zhu shook off the emotions in his heart and showed a joyful smile. Since you regard me as your older brother, I'll accept this honor and dare to call you younger sister Xiaokao. All right, no need to say any more. Everything goes without saying. Younger sister Xiaokao, give older brother face and drink this cup of wedding wine. That's more like it. Third brother Zhu, I wish you a lifetime of mutual unchanging love. On the wide land and high sky, two pairs of wings fly side by side. May you two grow old together, live in conjugal bliss, and be blessed with a child soon. Yuxia Cow had no qualms at all as she presented the congratulatory phrases that she plagiarized from the weddings in her previous life. Thank you very much, younger sister Xia Cow. I still need to toast at other tables, so please excuse me. You should eat more. Mother, please help me take care of her. After third young master let go of the beautiful dream in his heart, his words and actions had become much more natural. Lady Zhu looked at her son with relief and nodded, go, I'm here, don't drink too much. Today is third brother Zhu's good day. Even if he wants to drink less, it's still unavoidable. However, in order to prevent him getting dead drunk and being disliked by older sister-in-law, I have a sobering pill here, I guarantee that he won't get drunk after taking this. Yuxia Cow had wanted to say be careful that older sister-in-law would punish him to kneel on a washboard for getting drunk, 
but this was the ancient times when one had to respect their husband. Thus, it was better not to act too unconventional. Third young masters felt that he had a decent alcohol tolerance. However, with certain business partners and bad friends here, he wasn't confident that he could leave the banquet sober. Since Xiaoka said that, then the sobering pill must be very effective. After he thanked her, he took the pill and directly swallowed it. After toasting the elders' tables, it became very lively when he came to the table with people of the same generation. Although several people were arranged to help him block the alcohol, third young master Zhu was still forced to drink a lot of alcohol. Looking at the bustling scene in the main hall, Xia Kao sighed. These people really know how to look for trouble. Getting married is so tiring. Ah, while no one was watching them, Zhejun Yang quietly whispered in her ears, Don't worry, this prince will be there. You just need to rest in the bridal chamber. If you want to eat something, then just have someone go make it. This prince will take care of everything outside. You won't be tired. Go away. Did I say that I'll marry you? Yuxia Kao made sure that no one was paying attention to them as she glared at him fiercely and pinched the flesh on his thigh with her hands under the table. Damn, is this guy's flesh made of iron? My hands are sore, but he still looks fine. 